Welcome to the channel guys, we are back again and today I'm going to be talking about Evergreen Dream by Gallagher Fragrances, so stay tuned for that. And if you like the content, hit that like and subscribe button, I really do appreciate it. Now I did get a notification in the email the other day that they have decided at Gallagher Fragrances that they are going to vault this fragrance. I decided to talk about this fragrance mostly because soon I suppose it would be uh, irrelevant and I do have this sample. It was something I wanted to review but never really got around to reviewing and so now seems like the time. I will say at the time of releasing this video there's probably none left anyways. Uh, but Gallagher has and does occasionally remove or take things out of the vault for temporary sales. Um, I'm not going to be telling you guys though to rush out and buy this fragrance uh, just because it's been discontinued. I'm going to sit here and tell you uh, what it is about this fragrance that I like and what I don't like and um, why it actually took me so long to review. Now, I will say the first time I tried this fragrance, I, it really put me off. And so it was definitely... Uh, for a long time, the lowest on my ranking of Gallagher fragrances for ones that I've tried. Um, and I've tried most of the main line that they have now. Um, I haven't tried Perfect Perfecto. Um, and I haven't tried some of the other ones that have been vaulted. The main reason I think I didn't like this one at first is because it's actually quite harsh in the opening. Um, and it is something that is quite different as a green or foresty fragrance. So a lot of the times you have these green fragrances like Green Irish Tweed. It's bright, um, it's uplifting, it's very easy to wear. This one is actually a little bit different in the, that regard. So it does open up very uh, or somewhat harsh and resinous. Now it does, I believe, have pine resin in here. And one thing I really like about Gallagher, they have uh, some of the notes on the bottle and the samples. Now it does have pine resin and that does give it a very resinous, um, somewhat difficult feel for I think a lot of people. It makes it a little bit less mass appealing and it is fairly loud in the opening. That pine resin also gives it a very green and piney vibe, which I do like that aspect of it. I like how, um, I like how piney it is, if that, <laughs> for lack of anything better to say, it does remind me a lot of on the opening, um, walking through a heavy or thick pine forest. Uh, there is like this impression of a bit of earthiness and um, it does have also a little bit of uh, a slight sweetness to it in the background. It is mossy as well. Um, so this is a green earthy fragrance and I think what's interesting about it also is a lot of these green fragrances are worn easily or best in the spring and summer. This one I would definitely say, especially with this heavy opening, is much more suitable for, um, for fall uh, and maybe even winter. Um, the only reason I wouldn't put it off as winter is that in the dry down this one becomes a lot softer in my opinion. Now that is the opening. It is actually something that kind of grew on me with time. I still don't love the opening. It is a little bit harsh. Um, and that's, I guess, if you wanted my opinion on things, I don't find red tobacco, for example, to have a harsh opening. I actually really like the opening. And so I don't know if that really measures to anything, but comparatively speaking, I find this one on the opening a lot less pleasant and a little bit harder to really enjoy. The pine facet of it is amazing, but that very resinous, um, earthy feel is a little bit much. It's almost a little pungent, almost a little bit sour. But that does transition into actually a really nice dry down. And what I will say about this fragrance, it has a very, very nice um, dry down that is, it is unique in a way. It doesn't smell or remind me of anything that I can think of, and it does it's actually very appealing, especially in contrast to the opening. Now it is still piney in the dry down, piney, woody. Um, you start to get more sweetness. So it has actually a touch more sweetness. I would say the woodiness and the sweetness is balanced out uh, quite nicely. And um, the cashmere in this definitely gives it not quite a silky quality, but almost a, it has a warm and inviting quality to it that is very appealing and it has a, I almost want to call it more of a clothy or a comfortable feel to it. That is very nice and very inviting. So that opening 
in contrast, like I mentioned, is very, very harsh. Um, and it is somewhat enjoyable, but it's definitely a little bit harder to take, a little bit harder to wear. And I think that's one of the main reasons I would definitely say, you know, don't go out and buy it if, it's any, if there's any left. It's definitely, definitely a sample first. But it is different in respect to a lot of green fragrances and even a lot of woody fragrances. The woodiness uh, does come off quite a bit different. And I find pine and that piney feel, which I do really like, um, definitely is something that's not used as much. And it manages to be piney without smelling like pine salt, if that also makes any sense. But the dry down here, as I have it on my hand, is also um, very, very nice. Like I said, inviting, a little bit sweet, piney, woody, um, almost silky, and it's very, very nice. I think it is a classy fragrance, um, although, yeah, it definitely comes off to me a little bit more serious, not as casual, uh, not as fun as playful. So it is something that I think could be easily worn in a little bit more formal events, um, at least semi-formal. And it is one that I think is better suited for the fall and winter. Now, performance-wise, it isn't the best performer. It's quite loud in the opening, like I said. That harshness is accompanied by the fact that it does really jump off my skin in the opening. Um, it tones down to a little bit more of a scent bubble, a smaller scent bubble, I'd say about half an arm's length in the dry down. And it is kind of suitable in the sense that it is a more inviting, more warm, uh, more appealing and comforting fragrance, I think, in the dry down. And so it doesn't jump off as much, but it's something that is very enjoyable if someone comes close to you and they do smell it. So, I mean, ultimately, when it comes to things that are being discontinued, the main reason, the, usually the main reason things are discontinued is because they don't sell well. Now, that doesn't ultimately entail that they're bad fragrances. And with this one, I don't think it's a bad fragrance at all. I've definitely smelled things that are not being discontinued from other houses uh, that are not as good as this one. And I would actually say I probably like this one more than Fine Apple, which, to my knowledge, is not discontinued. Um, so... You know, you always have to take that with a grain of salt, and I always get the feeling a lot of times when discontinued fragrances get hyped up that they're being hyped up because they're discontinued for some reason, um, and that they're not usually that good. And at least for the, you know, my general feeling on a lot of the fragrances I've tried that are being discontinued is that I frankly didn't find them that great, and I understand why they were discontinued. This one, I think it is a little bit more challenging. It's interesting. Um, I think there's a lot of people who would enjoy this fragrance, but like I said, this is one that's definitely going to be a little bit harder for people to pull off and less people are going to like this one. And in essence, I'm pretty sure that's ultimately why it was discontinued. Uh, but I don't know all the facts. It could have been discontinued for any number of reasons. Sometimes things are discontinued because um, certain materials become too expensive or sometimes banned and unavailable and so instead of reformulating it gets discontinued but i'm actually gonna just cut the video there that's really all i have to say about this fragrance i do think it's a nice fragrance i think there's worse fragrances that aren't being discontinued not just by gallagher but by a lot of other fragrance houses um and it is worth a try if you haven't tried it um, it might come back sometime and if you find you really like it then you can pick it up. But again, I never recommend blind buying. I know I do it sometimes, uh, but it's definitely not a blind buy as far as if somebody were to ask, is it a blind safe blind buy? No, by no means is it a safe blind buy. This is something that's gonna appeal to a smaller group of people. Anyways, guys, like I said, cut in the video there. Um, have you tried Evergreen Dream? Have you tried anything from Gallagher? Let me know in a comment down below what's your favorite fragrance from Gallagher uh, or what your favorite green woody fragrance is just in general. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.